Imagine, if you will, that I have a picture of my wife. Just a, a little picture, and the picture in the slide is, is her when we were camping. And that little picture is when she came out of the tent. She hadn't had her coffee yet. She's smiling and looking nice. But it's a fine, adequate picture of my wife. And imagine then that if I take this picture and I put it in my wallet and walk around, and whenever I pull my wallet out and look at it, I go, <laughs> oh, I love her. She is just, she's, oh, she's amazing. I love my wife. And it would be fine. It would be a reminder of, of who she is. Imagine that I got a friend who's a professional photographer to take an amazing picture that not only captures what she looks like, but captures her heart and her love for me. And, and then suddenly everything changes. Because at that point, not only do I have a little picture in my wallet, I would take this picture and I would blow it up until it's poster size. I would put it on a t-shirt. I would run around and I would show it to you and say, look, look at, look at my wife. She's amazing and she loves me. And you would look at her picture and then you'd look at me and you'd look at her picture and look back at me and go, how in the world did that happen? How in the world did, did she fall in love with him? And I would take your question as an invitation to tell you the story of how we came to be a couple and how we got together and what's happened since then and how my life has changed because I'm in relationship with this woman. Now understand that my behavior changed because I got a new picture of my wife. I still loved her. She didn't change. But our relationship changed because I got a new picture of who she is. And this morning what I want to offer you is a new picture of the gospel. So that instead of having a picture in your mind that simply allows you to think, oh, Jesus loves me, you begin to move through your life wanting to share the picture in your mind because you understand better what the gospel really means. So we're going to cover the gospel. We're going to talk then in terms of young people and your legacy with young people. And so basically there's three pictures, the gospel, young people, and your role in young people's lives as adults. And so let's run through those, shall we? The first one is the gospel. Now in this picture, what you see is the classic picture of man on one side, and we're separated from God by the chasm of sin that's between us. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so Jesus came and made a bridge. And, and we're able now to move across that bridge and celebrate our lives in Christ. And, and because of the bridge Christ made, we have fellowship with God and fellowship with other believers. The problem is that if we get over there and we come back and we look back to our friend who's on the other side, then what we end up with is us over here looking back at our Christian friends saying, won't you come across? Won't you come across? Won't you come across? And if they don't come, then where we end up is we start, watch this, we begin to promote ourselves upward a bit and begin to look down on our friend who has not come across and say to them, you're foolish. You've made a bad decision. And over time, we may even say to them, you're bad, and, and you're evil, and you're the enemy. And our voice becomes shrill as the church when we talk to those outside the church, and they get repelled because we sound so shrill. And so if you, if you begin to think about the gospel in a new picture, let's look at this, this other picture. A renewed picture of the gospel takes you through this. It's very different. Same components, again, the picture is different, but the People and the players are still the same. There is no left side. We're not simply separated from God by our sin. Paul says that we are dead in our sin. and that, So we are in a much worse situation before we meet Christ than what we imagined before. And if that's our condition, then God doesn't sit passively in heaven because the scripture passage that we just read said that Christ did not count equality with God something to be grasped. So that star up in the upper right-hand corner 
is God and Jesus. And watch what happens. God does not sit passively in heaven and hope we come to him. He came to us. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And when he comes into our lives, he gives us new life. And he takes on our sin on himself. And he died and took on our death. And we now are free to live and to move in Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now watch. And that was Jesus going ascending to heaven. Sorry about that click. But watch this. Notice what Jesus did. He did not stay in the safe, easy place. He didn't stay in the worship and glory of heaven, the comfort of heaven. He left there because he loved and he came to us. And in that Philippians 2 passage, at the very beginning, are some of the hardest lines in Scripture. It says, Your attitude or mind should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. So the call on our lives is not to call the people outside the church to come, but to be ready to move into their lives so that we become pictures to them of the love of Christ. And I just want you to ponder for a second. What would it mean if the adult church at King's Grant Baptist began to think of the gospel when they think about young people as we have to go to them, not hope they come and join us? And that makes a very different outcome at the end of it. And it'll change the way your church moves.